everybody welcome to another video so today we're going to be looking a quick unboxing and we'll do a spray out and just compare it with to something like the gf3 because they're similar price it's the wrong pen r100 now i got the r100 because i've got the r500 and quite a lot of people think that's quite a good value for money gun which it is really um uh, so I thought maybe this would be a similar thing. Uh, how wrong can you be, really? Anyway, so I got this about a week and a half ago uh, via AliExpress. So Wrong Pen is, is the company that makes the R500. There's a lot of versions of it about, but it's all made by the same company. So this is like the parent company. And I thought to myself, well, I'll get one of these, see if I can find a, like a an r500 equivalent but in mini guns really something that was quite good uh reasonably well made uh, you know worked quite well etc and wasn't that expensive uh, at the moment the only one i've found that's like that is the gf3 the little ani gf3 in the uk sells about for about 32 and it's actually gone up i think it's about 35 gb pounds now this was including the duty uk duty vat etc was 50 eight dollars i say dollars i am in the uk we do we do uh normally have obviously the pound but i pay for it in us dollars so that's why i mention it uh but the actual base price is about 48 us dollars so if your country doesn't impose so many taxes as ours like in the us then you'll find that this thing is about 48 us dollars so these two are about the same price this is actually a little bit cheaper so in my mind i'm thinking well you know is it as good will it be as good will it be better uh so basically uh i've had quite a few problems with this i haven't actually used it yet although i have had it out the box and i have tried to uh you know just put some thinners for it and I just see make sure it was all right really but it's leaking air terribly out the front i'll put um I'll put a little video up in the up in the corner so you can see what I actually found. But it, it's basically letting air through all the time without you pulling the trigger. So there's a leak somewhere within the valve assembly here, the valve body assembly here. So I contacted Wrong Wrong Peng and said to them, "There's a problem with the gum." expecting them to I know I sent a video with it as well the video you've just seen uh expecting them to say okay you know well we'll take it back or give you another one or what or whatever but no 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 they decided that they would want me to take some of it apart now one of the things you'll notice about this which is a really odd design and one that I don't like at all is that when you loosen off the needle, the normal way you'll undo a needle is you'll loosen that off, that will come off in your hand, the needle will pull out together with a spring, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, yeah? So you would think the same with this, but no, 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 no. When you try and undo this, it actually comes to a stop. It won't come out because there's actually a circlip on the inside to stop it coming out. So to get the needle out, which is something they say you have to do every time you use the gun or, or if you want to give it a good clean which is perfectly normal that's what you normally do you'd normally take the needle out to give it a good clean so what they say to you is that you need to undo this basically so let's get the spanner provided and see if we can undo this no we can't yes we can no we can't so not too much of a headache i suppose although you would think the spanner that they supply with it would allow you to get this off so we undo that like so and then what you have is you have your normal spring together with a little needle that won't actually come out you need to get a pair of pliers or something in there to actually grab that which i'll use that for the moment because it's the nearest thing here i obviously wasn't that prepared and there's your needle so off. so there's your needle there's obviously your spring and this is your little assembly at the back now when i when i messaged them and they said okay take this off and, and show us the components to see if anything's missing they're just playing for time basically because you only get a certain amount of time to to send these things back so 
they said to me, take, you know, take it apart, send them a photo, etc., which I did. So what they said is they're going to send me some components, which basically means this. They also told me to put some glue on the back here, you know, Loctite, something like that. Put the needle in, put some glue on it, do this up really tight to see if it would stop the leaking. Well, you know, I've got news for you guys. It's not leaking out the back, it's leaking out the front. I could put my finger over there and fully close that off and it would still be leaking out the front, not the back. Okay, so really poor design. And to have to take this out each time, which is actually part of the body, seems to me like a really silly, really silly game. And to suggest that you lock tight this to stop the air leaking is a really, really poor design because if you're going to have to undo this every time, like it says in the instructions, if you're going to have to undo this every time to remove the needle, there's no point in Loctite in that, is there? Because you, it's, it's pointless, absolutely stupid. So, anyway, really bad design. Another thing that's a really bad design is the front you can tell i don't normally throw my toys out the pram but i i'm quite wound up with this one so what you've got here is the tip now this camera doesn't seem to want to focus oh, it is actually now if you can see the tip it's got like round edges on it here and if they look chewed up there's a very good reason for that but basically you've got the flats there flats there like you would normally have but yeah that's getting it all right now isn't it but these round edges, and what, I, what those round edges mean is that when you put the spanner in, the spanner supplied, it does go on, but it's not a very tight fit at all. And because of those round edges, when you try and put any pressure on it, it just rounds off and comes off. Now, I tried uh, an NSI washer spanner, I tried a Walcom spanner, and I tried a SATA spanner, and I've got loads of other spanners down there that I tried. None of them would fit this properly. What I, properly. What I ended up using was, and it will undo now because I've already had it off, because it was so tight at the factory, ridiculously tight at the factory, I ended up using some plumber's wrenches, which are like big wrenches you get on there, and that's the only way I could get it off, and that's why the sides are chewed. Now, I have got a returns label for this. I'm a little bit apprehensive about returning it because they're going to look at the, uh, the uh, tip and say to me, oh, you've ruined the tip and that's causing it to leak. Well, it's not causing it to leak because it was leaking before I took the tip out because the tip actually seals at the base here. If you can see here, that's where the tip seals and that part there, the flat part there, is unaffected by what I've done because all what I've done is on the outside part here. So it's nothing to do with air leaking. <coughs> it's all to do with problems in there, which is where the, the spring is. So we're going to take that out and we're going to have a look. Now it's actually actually held on. I might, I might, if you can see there, it's like the uh, LPH 80 etc. You see that brass collar there and it's got two cutouts on it. Well the idea was if you had if you had a, a bar that would fit between the cutouts and go down there so a bar not not uh, constricting at the end just a straight bar it would go straight down there locate in it and unscrew. So we haven't got one of those but we have got a screwdriver and this is what I use for the um, for the LPHs and you just catch that Catch that edge there, if you can see the edge. Catch one of those little grooves in the brass bit. Now I'm going to speed this bit up. So there's the brass end that I was telling you about. Now it's screwed down the whole length of the barrel, which is why it took so long to get it out. But we'll take that out. Now this was full of grease. I took some of the grease out. Exactly the same as the R500 I had. But you can see the ceiling rings here. That is just a nylon seal. And when we look inside, the only other ceiling part I could find is this small rubber O-ring. 
which is on the end of a brass, a br you can't really see it, a brass cap. So the spring goes like so and locates in the brass cap. And the force of that pushing down will seal it against the body of the gun. There's a small plastic seal in there, which I can't get out. Uh, so I reckon that's where it's leaking. But, you know, what, what do you do? So, thoroughly disappointed with this thing. If you're going to buy one of these, please don't. Buy something like this. Much better gun. You can get spare parts for it. Spare parts kit. Bit cheaper. In my opinion, much better. So we're going to do a spray out. I'm going to put this together. We'll do a spray out and we'll just see what pattern this produces. It's a 1.0. They do it in a 0.8 as well. This actually is a 1.2 because the only 1.0 I've got, I've actually converted to a 1.8 uh, as a primer gun. So I'll put the camera on my head. We'll get sorted out and we'll, uh, we'll just see what this thing does. And you'll be able to hear the air uh, leaking as well. Okay, guys. So I'm going to set this to about two and a half bar they recommend between 2 and 3.5 bar it's only to do a spray out we've got in there we've got a solution of clear coat with a little bit of black tinter in it and a little bit of thinners just to make it the same viscosity uh, as a normal sort of medium solids clear coat would be so 31 psi we'll ring it down you can probably hear the air coming out of it it's not as much actually since i've taken that apart and redone it it's not as much but it's still there um, so yeah about 25 psi and let's see how it goes you can hear it fluttering as well a little bit there's a pattern you wouldn't expect a huge pattern it is a nice even pattern or relatively even anyway maybe slightly bottom heavy but you know we'd have to play with the um, the settings on it for the air to, to see whether we get anything different to that but the pattern actually isn't that bad uh, it's just that the build quality and the fact that you need to undo this every time to clean it is just absolutely ludicrous we're going to try the GF3 and just see what uh, sort of a pattern that does compared to this uh, just to give us something to uh, compare it to really so we've got the old good old GF3 I'll do the same about 25 psi this likes to be used for base coat about uh, 25 psi 2.5 bar so about 36 psi these like to go anywhere between 2.5 and 4 bar 4 bar for uh, clear coat or 3.5 to 4 bar 2.5 bar for base coat is normally fine so I'll leave it at 2.5 bar which as I say is about 36 psi now so 1.2 so expect the fan to be a little bit bigger but already with this both of these are used on full fluid by the way already with this you, you can just feel it's actually it's not leaking if you listen it's not leaking the response is much better on the trigger uh, and it's actually cheaper believe it or not now normally you get a bit of a curve with this fan nothing to worry about but you'll normally see a slight curve could prove me wrong but it, it that's what it normally does but it's even so it doesn't really make any difference but let's see yeah see a slight curve you always get that slight curve on these things and i'm not sure why but it doesn't matter because it is a nice even fan so let's just get that down and put it next to that one hopefully you can see yeah so there's the two guns as i say expect a bigger fan with this because it is a 1.2 but even so the 1.0 still gives a bigger fan than that so it's quite a small fan but you know i mean th these are different as chalk and cheese this is very conventional in that you undo that you know i've never i've never met a gun that you have to take actually that end cap off completely to, to remove the needle seems like a real silly idea there's a circlip on the end of that or an e-clip on the end of that which stops you getting that out 
in the conventional way. Why they've done it like that, I have no idea, but it's a really bad design. Uh, I will do a, a proper review on it and we'll, well, we'll make a mess. We'll, we'll do a proper review and, you know, give you the feedback on it, but it, certainly I, I would, even if it sprayed like a 200 pound gun, I wouldn't entertain it because it's just going to wear out. You keep undoing that and doing that up, it's just going to wear out. Anyway guys, thanks as always for watching. Cheers, bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.